we are. Oh, we're live. Yay. Hi, I'm Dave Murphy. I'm social media marketing manager at uh, Sage. And this is... Uh, my name is Wendy van Gjost and I'm social media manager at Sage as well. Yep. So um, a few weeks ago, Wendy and myself had a great conversation about personal branding. Um, this week, we're going to talk about um, social selling. Um, both of us are qualified um, by uh, LinkedIn as Instruct qualified social selling trainers. And um, if you have any questions, please bring the questions through what we're going to talk about today. So yeah. events are a really important part of social selling. Personal brand we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about what you should share as well. Um, Wendy has a great blog as well. So the perfect blog post was one of your most recent ones about yeah. um, attending an event um, and a perfect blog post for LinkedIn. So we're going to talk about a few different things today. So I suppose the main focus of today is really events and social selling. So um, yeah. What would you suggest someone who would do in advance of going to an event? Well, I, th I think in general it's, it's good for people to understand that when you have an event coming up, whether it's for your own business or you work in a, a big business like Sage and you try to get registrations for your event, yeah. um, that you can do a lot with your own personal brand. And would you need something like Sales Navigator or can you just use normal LinkedIn? No, 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 it's just a matter of having profiles, complete profiles. Um, it's very important that you have a complete Twitter profile, complete LinkedIn profile. Before you start to reach out to people, you want to be complete, like you want to have a good personal brand. Yeah, I know you think have a relevant image on your profile. Yeah. If you're going to meet somebody at an event and you have an image from when you went to college or an image from a night out on your personal brand, just yeah. and many other things, it's just, and you walk up to this person at the yeah. event to meet them, they're going to be in total shock and not recognize you. Yeah. So have a recent picture. Yeah, absolutely. Really yeah. Important. That, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the base level, I think, that you need to, to go at, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think sharing content about the event is exactly. important. And yeah. when I look at, at Sage, we're promoting the Sage Summit at the moment, and um, it, it's a really big event. Yeah. And yes, we ask people to share a, yeah. about the summit, but it's really important to explain to people, well, why is this important to you personally, and why is this important for the people that should go to the summit? So your audience, people who yeah. you're connected with on Facebook, yeah. LinkedIn, Twitter, yeah. and all these places. Because social selling, a lot of the time, I think, is, is cornered by LinkedIn. And people just think it's because yeah. it's on a professional yeah. network that that's where it should really be. But like you say, it should be on Twitter, it should be on Facebook. And what you're Absolutely. sharing yeah. is really, really important to make it relevant. For those people, essentially, to give up their day or two days to travel yeah. to London, say, from Ireland, for example, or even from the UK, and give up their work where there might be only three or four people in the business. That's a lot of time away from your business. Yeah, yeah. So, so it needs to be a really good reason. Yeah, Otherwise, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. And I think you you made a great example yourself. You wrote a blog post about why people should uh, attend the Sage Summit. And what I really liked about it is because it was so personal, so people could understand why you thought it was good for them to yes, attend the summit yeah, yeah. instead of a marketing message, which you see a lot. Yeah. Where we just talk about wow, this amazing yeah. event. Every event is amazing. I mean, we're not setting up events because we think they're not going to be good. Every event is good. Yes, exactly. The fact that you told us in your blog post why it was important for you yeah, and yeah. how you thought it could help businesses, that made it easier for people to understand why yeah, it should well, To be honest, when I, when I wrote the post, I was just looking at what would it make, why would somebody want to give up their time? Yeah. What's relevant to people who are my followers or people who I follow as well on, on different networks that are marketing people? So what are they going to learn? By going to Sage Summit, so yeah. there's, there's, there is marketing tracks available at Sage Summit where really good keynote speakers, really good business experts are going to go in and talk about marketing your business yeah. from the small startup scale up to enterprise level. So that's where you think it makes it makes it relevant for my audience, but it makes it relevant for me to actually be able to sell that because that's yeah. where I come from in a, in a social selling perspective. I'm a marketing person, I'm not a salesperson, so like, yeah. I'm trying to sell my experience, my knowledge, and the same with the stuff I share. So. I think you touched on it um, quite recently as well, the 411 ratio of that. Can you explain that again and how that actually works? It's very yeah. basics of social Absolute, yeah. social media, but also very important for social selling as well. Yeah, yeah. so when you share content six times per week, per day, and that yeah. depends, of course, on the platform and, and your own plan of what you want to do with social. But um, when you share six pieces of content, four pieces of content are about the industry you're selling into. Yeah. Um, but that's not branded from the company you work for or your own business. So it's third party content. Yeah, yeah. One piece of content is uh, about your company. So it is about, in our case, it's about Sage, but it could be your own business. So it is yeah, really promoting yeah. your business or the product you True, sell. Yeah. And then one piece is personal content. 
and personal content can be um, a, a quote, for example, that's something personal, what yeah, motivates yeah. you on a daily basis. But it could also be a picture where you're having a team meeting or you have an event or something that shows the person behind the profiles. Why, why would you do that? That's new. This is a, this yeah. is a really good nugget, I think, of, 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 of information for anyone who's social selling or engaging on, on, on social. Why would you share that just a little bit, bit about yourself? Well, it, it's, it's easy to share content. Yeah. We can all do that. Yeah. Well, the sources are all the same, basically, yeah. whether it's all top or your company in, information or you're using Google Alerts or whatever, yeah. a particular silo or a particular subject area. So Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's content yeah. you share, and that's yeah. it's available for everybody and everybody yeah. can find it. Uh, and that's important, but it doesn't give that personal flavor to your profile. Yes. Yeah. People want to see who's behind that profile, who's the person that I'm following. Yes, yeah. you share really interesting content, but who are you as a person? Yeah. Because people like to connect with people, people like to buy from people. Exactly, yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. if they want to learn about the company, they will follow the company handles. But exactly. they decided to follow you. You as a person, and not you as the content machine who just shares. Yeah, you could be a bot essentially. Yeah, yeah. And there's no, there's no point in competing with bots um, at all. But yeah. yeah, exactly. You're sharing a video personality, and that's why I think you'll find one of the other sides of social selling is we're trying to pr prevent churn. So yeah. where somebody leaves a business and they take the business with them, that's yeah. why they take the business with them. Sometimes yeah. in in different circumstances, whether that's Sage or any other company I've ever worked for, is the personality. That brings the relationships yeah. on to the next business. And yeah. boy, they, then their clients buy that software yeah. from that person. So it's the yeah. person who's selling it. Yeah. So how would you prepare then for Summit or for any kind of event, whether it's you're going to an event like the uh, Social Selling or Social Summit event that's going to happen in, in Dublin quite soon, um, the social media event, uh, or if you're going to say Summit or if you go to any event, how would you prepare in advance? Um, if you go yourself, or yeah. so. I think there are two different ways of approaching it. Yeah. We say we focus on getting registrations, yeah. which is uh, if you organize an event yourself or you're in a business like Sage and you're focused on registrations, it is really important that you, of course, share content about the event, mm -hmm. but with that personal touch. So when you share an article about your event, make sure that you explain in your own words why you think this is interesting for yes. people. Yeah. That's, yeah. As, as we said, that's the basics. Um, I think what you did was really good, writing a LinkedIn post. The good thing about this is that it sticks on top of your profile. That's right. And I know a lot of people struggle with writing posts because it is it is more difficult than just share content that's already there. Exactly, yeah. And um, so I, I wrote a blog post about how you can actually write a good article and what you can write about. Yeah. And uh, we touched on, yes, you need to explain to people why you think it's relevant for yeah. them. Absolutely. Yeah. Another thing that's really important is if you have any figures or any stats about events that happened in the last month or the last year, you can use that as well so people get even a better understanding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, talk about uh, keynote speakers. Who are the people that will be speaking there? Yeah. Why? What What value are I'm going to get? It's going to have value to that person's business. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. yeah. 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 Uh, another thing that's important, are you going to be there at the event? And if you are, yeah. Are you going to meet with those people? So yeah. explain to people, are you going to be there? Yeah. If you're not going to be there, how are you going to follow the event? Maybe you're not there, but you're going to follow the hashtag exactly. on Twitter. Yes. So yeah. you can still yeah. interact with people. Um, maybe you're not going to be there because it's too far away or you're basically not able to go yeah. there. But you want to follow up with people after the event to hear about from them, how they experienced the whole so event. So in a situation like this, say, if you lay it very clearly, if you were um, business development person and you had a, a potential client who was going to an, an, an event and you personally couldn't go to the event, would you organize for somebody else on your team or somebody else from your company to meet that person? Absolutely, yeah. 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 That, that's, that's what you want in the end. You want people to meet with you or your yeah. colleagues yeah. to learn more about your products. At the end, you want to sell a product. Yeah, exactly. The whole event yeah, yeah. is yeah. set up to sell products. Yeah, absolutely. And yes, some of people will go there just for awareness and to get a better yes. understanding yeah. of the business. Yeah. But still, you want somebody there to welcome the person, to have a conversation. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And if you were, if you were actually going to your event, I, I just wrote, uh, just read Janice B. Gordon's post on, on, on the Sage blog, and she said, get there early, beat the queues, find your way around, know the space yeah. in advance. Obviously, do your research and, and look at the floor plans. But that gives yeah. you the opportunity to find some quiet places. 
to have one to one conversations, which yeah. I think is really, really important. So if you are going to an event, research the floor program, look at the event, look at the, the tracks you want to go, look at the key, keynote speakers you want to go, but also make time to meet people. Yeah. yeah. I think it's really, really important yeah. about it. Also in your blog post, just jumping back to your blog post about the perfect LinkedIn blog post, you said make make the language easy. What do you yeah. mean? Boy, that. Yeah, that's a, a tricky one that we, we all fall into every now and then. We're very used to use certain words. Uh, we work in an, an IT industry, so yes, we're yeah. used to use words like um, business development, uh, AEs. Um, and acronyms, like, yeah, like, like yeah. AEs or, or yeah. BDEs and, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, for, yeah. for us, that's completely normal. Yeah, we know yeah. what we're talking about, but this doesn't mean that your prospects and customers understand true, those true. words as well. Yeah, yeah, and it's very scary when you read an article and you see all those words and you're like, this is not for me because I don't get the language. Yes, Imagine if yeah. I go to that event, that's going to be very difficult. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay, but that, that makes perfect sense. That's yeah. a really important yeah. one, yeah. I've always, um, I think I read an article a good few years ago when I actually started writing content, maybe about 10 years ago, that in it, that you should actually target your language to the, to the really capabilities of an eight-year-old child. Yeah. Because yeah. eight-year-old, I have an eight-year-old child, he's very smart, but that's the language, keep it clear, simple, concise, small sentences, and explain what you're, you're doing so that somebody can read it and understand yeah. it straight away without having to Google a reference for yeah. what, what, what does this mean? You know, yeah. Exactly, yeah. That's yeah, and maybe it's interesting for you to share, uh, you wrote some in-mails for people to register for. Yeah, I suppose to kind of put the sage spin on it as well, we, we have, um, as, as part of that, we had a, um, a colleague communication toolkit. So our good colleagues in the social team in the UK, Ellie and Megan, have a, uh, that, that communication toolkit has gone in, and as part of that, to enable our sales people within our organisation who are professional social sellers we have put together about five or six different emails that they can use in messages for their current customers and also for potential uh, prospects yeah. that they can contact, which which makes it easier because during the day, I'm sure it's like writing a blog post. For some people, it comes easy. Excuse me for that. <laughs> we had an, an interruption there. Um, yeah, so like I said, it can take a couple of days basically to get for some people to get around. But if you have that information available to the, the person, they can personalize that content yeah. and write maybe just one or two lines around the content. Say, for example, I wrote six in mails to give to all of our sales guys to cover a variety of, of, of uh, disciplines within sales. So some of them are SMB, some of them are enterprise guys, some are inbound, some are outbound. So they can all use this information and just personalize it with one or two sentences and send it by a message if it's a current connection. And send it by in mail through Sales Navigator if it if it's a, a prospect, which I think is really good. It's really useful to say, look, can your company afford to miss this? This is really good. These are the reasons why. Lays it out very quickly, one paragraph, and they can personalise it based on the knowledge that they have already with 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 those uh, those clients. So. Um, but, but when you say personalise, because yes, we yeah, that personalise. You explain why you should go. But yeah. What is personalising an an in mail or message? Well, I suppose personalising an email is based on the conversations you might have had with a client or a potential client over over a while, and say, oh, "I see, John, that you're you're looking to expand into uh, the payroll area a little bit more because your client base. So, I think, say, your X product is not useful for you anymore, but there will be demonstrations on this. There's also going to be a subject matter expert from our company plus an industry expert. So, these are reasons why you should go and attend, say, say, someone, for example." Yeah. These tracks, and these particular speakers, are going to be exactly what you need to know. And then you can also talk to to people who are using it, your peers, which is great. Yeah. Like yeah. Th that's the kind of spiel that you want to add into an email to make it more personal. So that you, you I, su I suppose you, it's the wrapping on the present. So yeah. some of the, some of our event is like a present, and the wrapping is the personalization and the card that you want yeah. to kind of put around that. So. Yeah. And but what if you don't have any emails? If you don't have it in mails, I'm, I'm yeah. sure people are watching and are like, yes, I get that you can send an email, but I don't have or I'm not paying for LinkedIn. So yeah, use messages. Use messages. Use your client. Use your customer base. Um, your connections on LinkedIn. So um, if you have any number of connections, we have one or, or seven hundred or seven thousand. Reach out to the ones you think that this might be useful for. Yeah. So we did an exercise last year um, for Sage Summit in Chicago, our, our big global event. Um, I would like to say at this 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 juncture as well, we have Sage Summit currently going um, going to happen in Australia and Germany, all before the UK happens. So we have multiple local ones, and um, just to get 
more people at the events because last year it was in one, one location in the, in the US and it was a lot of travel for a lot of people for a few days whereas these local ones are very locally focused yeah. Um, which is, which is great. Well. Localization, yeah, exactly, yeah. which is really important. Yeah. Um, so last year, because it was a global event, we actually ha we were asked internally to, even without sales navigating, they're just on a social selling level, on basic LinkedIn, just to send out five or six messages mm -hmm. and write a blog post as well. So I did yeah. a blog post, wrote five or six messages, and sent links where people can engage live because it was in Chicago on. Uh, True links on the, on the web so they could see the keynote speakers that they wanted to see. Yeah. And I picked out uh, specific people I worked with or people I had a, a relationship with in the past who I thought it might be interesting for their business because they were in startups or in technology businesses that could use a software as a service platform that Sage provides. Yeah. So, in a, in a nice so, soft touch, is, this might make your business easier if you, you, you look at this event yeah. rather than trying to sell them. Our products are great, buy our yeah. products. Never lead with that in social selling, no, ever. No, no. Make multiple touch points, build a relationship. Don't go out the gate with shouting, going, buy our products, they're brilliant. Nobody wants to know. It's no. like we've always said in social selling, you go to a, a party and you start to talk to somebody and they go, well, I climbed Kilimanjaro and I yeah, went up Mount Everest backwards and I <laughs> swam the Atlantic. You just turn off and you walk away and yeah. you just go, that person's full of BS and yeah. you just move on, like, you know. Yeah, Whereas yeah, you want conversational cues where it's natural and the conversation flows, and that's what that's exactly what social selling is. Yeah, as well. so. yeah, and then, yeah, that, that's a really good one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think if we we move on a little bit from from LinkedIn, what would your suggestions be around, say, Facebook and Twitter for for social selling for an event? Well, I'm I'm a big fan of Twitter, yeah. and um, I think it's it's a great platform to start engaging with people before the event. Yeah, um, every event nowadays has a hashtag. So yeah. it's quite easy to find the hashtag and to see who else talks about the event before. Yeah. Um, you can share content about the event before. Um, I've been using Twitter myself as well to invite people for events. Okay, how do you do it, that? It's, it's just a different approach where you send a tweet to somebody which is very personal. Yeah, it's like a, a direct message. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but you can even do like a real tweet, so not yeah, even yeah. a direct message, but just a tweet saying, hey, we have an upcoming event and I would like to send you an invite. Would you be interested? Um, but I experience is that people really appreciate it. Yeah. Because yeah. it's something different from what they normally get. Yeah. And then when people say yes, of course you send them a direct message to ask for the details. Yeah, yeah. Never ask for the details, of course, in public. Because yes, yes, yeah, like yeah, yeah, email address well, or that's true, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so make sure that you follow the person on Twitter. Yeah. Because uh, otherwise uh, they can send you a direct message, so they need to follow you back. When yeah, you follow each other, exactly, you can send yeah, direct yeah. messages. So don't make it too difficult for people. Make sure you follow them before you reach out. To yeah, them. yeah, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, you get those awkward situations. But yeah, um, yeah that's that's one thing I really like about that's Twitter. Brilliant. And um, what I think Twitter is very powerful for is during the event, the the, the conversations yeah, yeah. at the event. As I said, there's always an event hashtag. Yeah. And every time when there's an event, even when I'm not there. I love to just jump on the hashtag and just have a conversation with people about the yeah. event, hear about what they think of the event, um, hear about keynote speakers, yeah. because a lot of people quote what people say, so you can get bits and pieces of the event, and when you're at the event, it's great to use to meet with yes. people. Yes, yeah, exactly. So what would you normally put, say, in a post, which would, would it be an image or a video, the hashtag and some kind of inspirational quote from, say, a keynote or from yeah. a track that you've yeah. you've gone to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I also like to have conversations with people. So if somebody at the tweets, events as well. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And somebody tweets saying, "Hey, I'm now at this keynote speaker," and they share a quote that you reply to it, where you give your opinion, saying yes. that you're there yeah. as well. So really having conversations with people. Yeah. And the nice thing is when you then meet people in person. Yes. There's already this connection. Yeah, because you have built up this this yeah. type of conversation in advance. That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. And it, it works great for people who are not at the event as well. Yeah, I, th I think it really does. Like our ADs, uh, yeah. our AEs, and our county executives and our, our, our business executives and stuff like that. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. So how would they best do it? Would they? Would you recommend that they use something like Hootsuite on their desktop to follow a particular yeah. trend yeah, you can that, do that, that's going Absolutely, on yeah. or just to use it by, by mobile and set up a list on, on Twitter. Yeah, but what I always do is I just search on Twitter for the hashtag Yeah. because yeah. for me I think it works the fastest. Yeah. When yeah. you click on latest tweets you have a real-time feed of exactly, tweets yeah. coming in, yeah. but Hootsuite is a good tool that you can use for it as well. Yeah. And um, of course you don't have the whole day to be on Twitter, especially when you're not at the event. 
Yes, exactly. So yeah. try to find some times during the day, maybe for 10 to 15 minutes, where yeah. you just engage with people. Yeah. Um, even better if you have a list of prospects who will be there. Yes. Create a Twitter list with your prospects. Yes. And yes, see what yeah. they tweet they, about. Exactly. And engage the in the conversations that exactly. they're, they're, yeah. they're having as well. Another tip as well as I would recommend is, um, like Jan Gordon said in her, in, in her blog, look at the event schedule. And if you're not even there at the event, pick the tracks that are going on yeah. um, and at those particular times join in the conversations yeah. and make that, that Twitter list of your customers that are going, I think that's really, really important. And the same same with Facebook as well, keep an eye out on Facebook yeah. for your customers that are there at the event, follow what, what's happening in their timelines and engage the yeah. conversation. Yeah, and I think yeah. nowadays with, with all the live video options that we have, yes. yeah. it's so easy to follow what's going on at an event because there's always somebody who does a live video. Yeah. We are doing a lot of live videos as well. Yeah, we're doing triple live events. video now at the moment. That's, yeah, <laughs> so we do three live videos. No, but it's so easy. So you can yeah. just jump on those and follow what's actually going on, which makes it even easier to have conversations with people. Yes. Because yeah. then you know exactly what has yeah. been going on. I think the big thread of this conversation of the last last five minutes any of this conversation is it's peer-to-peer. -peer. Yeah. And this is what social selling is really about. Yeah. It's not broad. It's not broadcast social media. It's peer, it's using the broadcast availability of social media and just really honing in on that person or multiple people. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, and making it's, those it's, conversations and connections. Yeah, and it's quality over quantity. You don't exactly. want to reach yes, everybody yes, at the event. Yeah, just yeah. maybe a group of ten people that are extremely important for you. And yes. Focus yeah. on those. And you can 10. do it from your desk, whether you're in South Africa, whether you're in Australia, yeah. whether you're. Dublin or America or whatever and the event is on in London or the event is on in Germany or, or wherever you can actually engage yeah. from your, from the comfort of your desk or yeah. if it's a yeah. different time zone from the comfort of your, yourself at home whatever yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and a lot of people ask me okay how do I get more followers on Twitter events that's, that's my main answer just jump on an event hashtag start really? to talk with people that's that's how I get my followers when I see that there's an event going on which I like, yes, marketing yeah, related yeah, or yeah. social media related. I always try to have at least 10, 15 minutes that I interact with the hashtag. Yes. I yeah. follow some people who are there because I know they have a similar interest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just ask some very simple questions. What is the highlight for you of this event? Or um, I'm follow. I'm just tell people, hey, I'm following it online. Is there anything particular I missed? Yeah. Yeah. You get answers, so you get conversations, and people start to follow you because you're human yes yeah, yeah well that's a, yeah you're not a boss yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, brilliant. So that's that's a, another benefit of doing social media yeah. during events absolutely yeah and is there any other platforms you'd recommend outside of the traditional tree for social selling would instagram be yeah. a platform for social yeah. selling at an event I would for me yes. it is yeah. Yeah. yeah for me it is so, I think, so yeah. how would you use that at an event for for social selling uh, well, it does, there are hashtags on Instagram as well, yes, so yeah. search for the event hashtag first of all. Yeah. Um, you can follow your prospects on Instagram, of yeah. course, because it's an open platform, it's absolutely not creepy or, or anything. Yeah. I mean, those people have profiles because they want to be seen. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. you can absolutely follow your prospects there, Yeah. especially with the Instagram stories now and, and Instagram live video. Yeah, yeah, and the new carousel feature as well, which I yeah. think it, which is kind of is, you could really condense activity in one post. Yeah. So you say, for example, you meet uh, all your prospects or you meet customers, or if you're like, um, we have humans of business on Sage as a platform, you just want to highlight 10 of the humans of business in one day really quickly at the event that you're running, or your clients, you want to yeah. showcase your clients, 10 quick photos, and then yeah. just tag them all, and you have a carousel really yeah. quickly. Yeah, yeah. and then you mentioned something interesting, tag the people. Tag them, yes, yeah. and the location, I think, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Why tag the people and why? Oh, because people get a notification first of yes, all, yeah, when you yeah. tag me I will get a notification. And location is because I always search on location. Yes. When I go to a restaurant, the first thing I do is I check on Instagram <laughs> the pictures because I want to see what I can expect. Yes, yeah, yeah. So it, it's, yeah, it works really good. Yeah, and it's also the opportunity then of amplification. If you tag somebody, they're going to repost on, course, on Instagram. Yeah. You tag somebody in Twitter or something like that, they're going to they're going to like, they're going to retweet, yeah. they're going to comment and share. So you're amplifying to bigger networks there as well. Yeah, yeah. And don't forget LinkedIn. Cause yes. During the event, you can use LinkedIn as well. That's exactly it. I think people actually forget that LinkedIn is a great mobile platform. Yeah. Um, there's a, multiple apps available. There's obviously LinkedIn's normal app. There's um, Sales Navigator app if you have a Sales Navigator license. So use those platforms. Actually, yeah. while you're there using it on Sales Navigator, check if you're check your leads. 
see if they're going yeah. in advance. Um, obviously tag that they're going to the event within Sales Navigator as well and then just spend some time on LinkedIn promoting on LinkedIn. Write a blog post about your experience. If you're a customer yeah. going to somebody else's third party event, write about going to the event, what, yeah. what you expect, who you met at the event and what happened after yeah. the event. And share your social social selling experience with, with everybody. Um, Wendy has a, set up a, a group on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah. You can explain yeah. the, the so, name of it. So for everybody who is interested in social selling, there's a, a LinkedIn group called Social Selling Experts. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to join the group, uh, just request access and I will give you access. Uh, but yeah, that's a group where we try to have conversations about social selling yeah. and to share best practices. Because it, it's something really new. Yeah. And um, yes, we test a lot and we see a lot and we, we give our opinions on, on stuff. But there are more people that have different experiences. Yes, and it's yeah. great to be in one place where you can share experiences and learn from each other. It's again, it's conversations. It's, 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 it's peer to peer again, again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. I think is it's a very unused part of, of LinkedIn groups in general. Yeah. But you're, like, the membership of your group is up in the thousands now, is it globally? No, no, it's 700. 700 but yeah. That's from a group that started with nothing in November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and basically came from an event. Yeah, it came from so an event. So yeah. I think the history of this yeah. is important to share as well. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was at an, a LinkedIn event and I was talking to people who were social sellers. Yeah, it was a LinkedIn social selling yeah, event. Yeah, yeah. and um, they all came with the, the same questions and the same feedback saying, hey, of so much we would like to learn. Yeah. But it's really hard to find people with similar interests and similar experiences. And um, I thought we should have one place where we can do that. A yes. safe environment where we can learn from each other, where um, people with less experience can learn from the more experienced people and the people with more experience can learn from each other. Yeah. So we can all learn. Um, so that's why I started the group. Again, it's really interesting when you bring people together with a similar interest. Yeah how that can work together and how you can build a community of people. Well, that's it. it's one of the hardest things to do is actually build a community. Yeah. But obviously, the need was there for people to share their experiences yeah. on social selling as it's relatively new um, to a lot of businesses. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that, absolutely, that, yeah. That, that's great. Yeah. Um, with clients at, at events, so say a, a client is going to an event, would you engage? Is there a three, for me, there's three steps. I don't know if you agree or not. There's, before engaging before preparing them for the event mm -hmm. meeting them at the event to make the most of say for example if you're saying earlier go to a specific track that might be important to them or bring them to a keynote make sure you have coffee or, or lunch or dinner with yeah. them and then following up after yeah. i think this is the big thing that people miss so what are your suggestions around following up after an event on social selling uh well on social it, it goes even further than social yeah, selling yeah. pick up the phone and just ask them how do you think the event yeah, was for yeah. you and what, ha what have you learned? But there are softer ways of doing it by using social media, yeah. which could be a simple tweet just at five o'clock after the event saying, hey, I hope you had a great time. What was your highlights, for example? Yes, yeah, really yeah, like? yeah, yeah. That's a very soft touch. Um, you can even say, um, I'm going to give you a call in a couple of days to get some feedback on the event or yeah, to hear yeah. your opinion on certain keynote speakers. Yeah, or. Yeah. Um, you can send an email, of course, similar type of message. Yeah. But just in general, it's really important that you take an action. Yes, I think it, that's really important that you do take an action. Just, yeah. to, just common courtesies like thanks a minute for your time at the event. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, yeah, let me know. Would yeah. you go as far, maybe as not at that stage, but maybe the next stage after that, when they reply to offer them maybe a discount or a special promotional code or yeah. start Could pushing be, yeah. the sale a little bit more or volunteer and say look next meeting next time you're in x location let's meet up and let's bring, bring this yeah. forward yeah yeah and i think you have a great opportunity people who took the effort to go to your event yes to give them a call i mean yeah, yeah. And, and not to talk about your products but just to hear from them what they thought of your event yeah, yeah. how they enjoyed it because then you easily can move the conversation towards products exactly so yes the chance they've seen yeah. your product They've been talking in our case with Sage colleagues or maybe with yourselves. So yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, yeah. Super, super. Yeah. Right. Um, I think, I don't know if we have any questions. Can we get to move this one? I don't think we have any, uh, any questions at the moment. Um, 
so yeah, if you do have any any questions at all, feel free to reach out um, to myself. I am Dave Murphy on all social platforms, and Wendy. Yeah, Wendy Van Hilst on all platforms. Yeah, and Wendy Van Hilst.com as well for yeah. regular blog posts yeah. on social media, social selling, and yeah. for personal stuff as well. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. And, and as Dave said, just make sure you reach out to us if you need any help. Any any help, whatever business you're from, we'll be delighted to uh, take your questions and uh, help you with social selling and yeah. any kind of social media. And maybe you can tell us how you prepare for an event. Yes, yeah, so yeah. Maybe we're missing out on something really important yeah. or... I'm sure we are because I'm, 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 I'm not sure we know everything about <laughs> events no. or social selling. We're always <laughs> learning all the time. So yeah. yeah. So thanks very much for your time and uh, we look forward to uh, next Facebook Live with uh, Wendy and myself. Take care. Thank bye you. Bye. bye.